All right, boys and girls, here it is. The Fat Bob. And it is mean looking. It, it looks purposeful. Definitely does. It's got the uh, Speedo on top of the tank, which I like. It's got a 114 cubic inch engine. Dual discs in the front. Sort of an unusual headlight for Harley, but looking kind of very modern. And a mean looking dual exhaust system here. It's bobbed, that's why it's called the Fat Bob. And the seat keeps you right in place there. First, let's talk about looks. When I first saw this bike at the bike show uh, this winter, I did not like it. I thought, well, that doesn't look like a Harley to me. That looks more like it's trying to be a muscle bike from some other brand. I didn't like the headlight, and I just thought it was looking way too modern, and Harley should stick to what they do best, which is make really great looking uh, retro looking bikes, they're not really retro, Harley never stopped making them, uh, but Harley makes Harleys and it did not look like a Harley to me, so at first I didn't like the looks, but uh, as time went on and I got a chance to ride one, by the time I actually rode one in the spring, I really liked the look of it. Uh, it uh, it grabbed my attention, the dual discs, the inverted forks, the headlight looks mean and uh, it looks really cool in my opinion now. Uh, the, the tank uh, and the colors and everything matches really nicely. It's a really well put together bike. Uh, it's got some competitors in the muscle bike category, things like the Ducati Diablo, but in my opinion it looks way better than the Ducati Diablo, uh, which is a surprise because Ducati usually makes beautiful bikes but the Diablo not so much anyways that's just my opinion usually the feet forward sitting position on a motorcycle is not my thing I tend to like to have my feet underneath me and if not that I tend to at least want to have them a little closer to me so I'm not really a cruiser rider I have owned a cruiser before I started out riding on an intruder 1400 and uh, that bike uh, did have sort of a mid-control setup with the legs uh, nicely bent so you could still feel like you were in control of the bike. I find the feet forward sitting position tends to make me, I don't know, it tends to make me feel like I'm not fully in control of the bike, like I can't press on the pegs in order to control and move the bike around. But if you're going to have a position with your feet forward, this is a pretty good one. Uh, the bike fit me really, really well. I'm 5'11 and a half, and uh, the reach to the bars and to the foot pegs was just right for me. So I'm probably an average sized guy. Harley probably designed the bike to fit an average sized guy, and that's whom it fits. The bars are nice and flat. Uh, the shape of them is really nice. I found that uh, my hands kind of naturally reached to the bars and I did not, I could control the bike in turns and uh, move it around really well and, and turn the bike tightly without feeling any pressure on my wrists. Uh, the leg room was uh, pretty good. The saddle was really comfortable. Uh, yes, you do kind of sit in that little scoop and you are held in place uh, in that saddle, but it is a nice comfortable place to be. I did not mind uh, the seating position. Of course, you're out in the wind. If uh, I were to buy the bike, I'd go for a short windshield just to keep the wind off my chest, just to keep uh, from being a sail in the wind, so to speak. Uh, but the seating position was really nice and I was uh, quite comfortable 
uh, on the hour or so that I spent on the bike. So let's talk about the engine. We have the Milwaukee uh, 8 engine with uh, 114 cubic inches. We're talking over 1800 cc's of power and uh, will, I think it's close to 120 uh, pound feet of torque, which is an enormous amount of torque. Uh, the horsepower of the engine is probably in the 90 horsepower neighborhood, so that's not a lot of horsepower for an 1800 plus cc engine. Uh, but the torque is definitely there. It is. It comes in early and it's endless. The bike just surfs on a wave of torque all the time. There are things you can do to the engine to improve the power. Uh, at the very least, most bikes will get a stage one kit. Uh, meaning that they're going to get a high-flow air filter, a uh, better, more open exhaust, that sounds better as well, and also, a, uh, I believe, uh, a remapping of the throttle uh, maps. And so that usually uh, improves power quite a bit. Then you can go stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, uh, but uh, stage 1 is probably the one that most people will opt for. Uh, but the power is adequate, the torque is amazing, the bike is fast, it has no problem accelerating, and the thing just goes when, when you twist the wrist. Now, does it go as much uh, or as fast as a Diavo or a, a Triumph Rocket 3? Probably not. It will not win a race against those muscle bikes. Uh, but it is definitely in its stock form uh, the most powerful, probably the fastest Harley out there. Uh, if you wanted to race those other two bikes, then you better start shelling out money for uh, aftermarket parts. If you've got a bike that's supposed to be somewhat performance oriented, and this one is, this is supposed to be the performance Harley, uh, it should do more than just go fast in a straight line, it should be able to corner and uh, corner it can. It actually has a surprising amount of lean angle before you start scraping anything. I did not manage to scrape anything on this ride. Of course, this was a borrowed bike and I wasn't particularly trying to, uh, but uh, I did not feel like I was coming uh, near the bike's limits. So the bike can lean quite a bit. The pegs are a little bit higher, so you have a little bit more ground clearance on either side. One thing that I didn't like about this bike is the giant fat front wheel. Now, I know that it looks cool and I know that uh, it can probably roll over anything, but it, was, it took some muscling to get this wheel to turn and to get this bike to turn. And at slow speeds, there was just a little bit of a wobble when the bike turned in. Just a little something that was weird. Maybe I'm just not used to these uh, smaller fat front wheels and, and their characteristics uh, but it felt to me like there was something a little bit off about the handling at really low speeds. At high speeds it performed well but you have to have a good uh, amount of pressure on the bars in order to counter steer the thing to where you want it to go. So another integral part of any Harley is the feel and the sound of the bike. Because, let's face it, you don't buy a Harley for performance or to carve canyons with. You buy a Harley partially because it feels and looks cool. And definitely the bike looks cool uh, and it does feel cool to be on it. You do feel like you're on something special when you're on this bike. Uh, unfortunately though, I've ridden a, f a few Harleys in the past, and I'm not a Harley guy, but I've ridden a few of them, and I've always enjoyed them, and one of the things I enjoyed about them is the shake. And this engine, with a couple of counterbalancers, uh, it's solidly mounted, but it's very well counterbalanced. It's almost too well counterbalanced. It's like they took a lot of the character out of the engine. I remember uh, back in the day, when you got on a Harley, the whole thing would shake, and would basically let you know that you're on a motorcycle. Now, I got that feel with my Moto Guzzi Stelvio that I ride, that's my uh, regular riding bike, and yet with this Harley, I did not get that feel. Uh, the other thing that I did not get is the sound, the pipes are too quiet. Now, realistically, uh, as with any Harley, 
Almost no Harley leaves the dealership with its stock pipe. I'm sure most people replace the pipes to get a better sound. I did not hear much of anything when I was riding. I just heard the wind. Uh, I didn't hear any intake noise. Uh, the exhaust was lost. Uh, if I even twisting the throttle at a stop, I could barely uh, hear it. And Harleys do have that great potato potato sound. I want to hear it. Uh, so definitely, if you get this bike, uh, a slip on at least a slip on. Uh, muffler should be one of your first purchases. It is an expensive bike uh, and it is outperformed by its competition. It's, it's, it's essentially limited by the fact that it's got an air-cooled engine that can't rev up. So you've got something like a Diablo uh, kicking out 160 horsepower and the Harley kicking out, what, 90 horsepower or something like that. Uh, that's a uh, tough situation for Harley uh, to deal with. Uh, even if they increase their horsepower, they might still get smoked uh, from, in, in a, certainly in a quarter mile, by a stock Diablo. Uh, so if you buy this bike, don't buy it for the performance. The performance is good, but not awesome. Uh, buy it for the, for the sound of the Harley. Buy it for the look of the Harley. Like I said, uh, this bike looks a lot better than a Diablo or a Rocket 3. Uh, it is beautiful, real nicely made, and the, the look grows on you. It, it, it's badass. It looks like a pit bull standing there ready to fight. And so, you know, that's part of the, uh, that's part of the attraction of it. And when are you ever going to get to use the full potential of the Diavel on a city street? And it's not a bike that you can take on a track either. So definitely, when you're talking about cruisers, you're talking more about uh, the look, the feel, the attitude, the sound, and stuff like that. And based on that criteria, this bike uh, definitely competes. The dual discs up front are definitely necessary. Okay, this is a heavy bike, and when I rode the lowrider, one disc in the front was not enough. I, uh, the braking on the lowrider was adequate, but that was about as nicely as I can put it. I was not confident, uh, and I would not be confident in an emergency situation that that bike will break fast. Whereas the Fat Bob definitely uh, comes to a stop pretty quickly with the dual discs up front and the big fat front tire. Uh, has lots of traction to uh, stop the bike quickly. The rear brake, on the other hand, was absolutely atrocious. It was probably the worst rear brake I ever felt, probably because of the weight of the bike. So you can't stop a bike that heavy with that brake, but it wasn't powerful enough. Uh, even when I stomped down on it, it barely made any dent in the bike's forward motion, and it had a real wooden feel with no feel to it whatsoever. So, should you buy it? Who should buy it? Uh, and uh, uh, what should you do with it when you buy it? It's a great bike. It's the best Harley out right now. If I was to buy a Harley, I would buy this one, no questions asked. I don't think it's the best looking one, but I think it's the meanest looking one, and I think it's the best performing one by a mile. Uh, now, if you're budget-minded, it's going to be more expensive than a lot of the competition. Maybe not a Ducati, but certainly a lot of the Japanese power cruisers can be had for a lot less money with similar or better performance. If you have the money, spend it. You will not regret getting this bike. Uh, it is uh, definitely up there with the best power cruisers up there. And let's face it, Harley are the original cruisers. So if anything, the other bikes are just trying to be Harleys. Harley is what it is. Um, is it a traditional Harley? No. Can it feel like a traditional Harley? Yes, except for the vibes. It doesn't vibrate enough to be a traditional Harley, but uh, it can sound like a traditional Harley. When you're cruising along with your feet forward and your arms out in front of you, uh, it can feel like a traditional Harley, and uh, you can definitely uh, be a menace to society on this bike if that's what you want to be. It's fast enough, it's powerful enough, you can make a quick pass, uh, and you can uh, do do some serious damage to the speed limit on this bike if you really twist that throttle and let it go. So, do I recommend this bike? I would, if you are in the, in the market for a nice power cruiser that looks good, that, that can sound good, 
uh, and that performs well, I would definitely recommend this bike. I, if I was in the market for a bike like this and I had to choose, this bike would be near the top of my list. I think I would take it over Diablo um, just on looks alone. I mean, when you're buying this bike, looks tend to be more important than straight line or even uh, performance in the corners because it's a cruiser, it's not really a performance bike. So uh, when people cruise, they want to feel cool, uh, they want to look cool, and they want that curb appeal. And this bike gives you that. It is a good looking uh, motorcycle. And the Diavel is a great performing motorcycle, whether it looks good, well, I guess that's a subjective call. To me, the Fat Bob looks better than a Diavel and a Rocket 3. So guys, bonus. Uh, when you ride a cool motorcycle like a Harley, you have to learn how to wave in a cool way. And uh, with that in mind, I give you this. I waved. Yeah, you gotta do the cool wave though. You gotta drop your hand to the side. <laughs> wave out the side. Do the cool wave for these guys. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, now you got it. Now you got the cool <laughs> wave. The cool wave. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for watching. You know the drill. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate your support. Uh, and if you want to see more of this content, hit that bell so that you are notified the next time I put out a video. Lots of cool bike reviews coming up as well as other content. So stay tuned. Thank you again. And may the spokes be with you.